The square root of 2 and the square root of 9 are both known as thirds. But what's the difference between them? The square root of 9 equals to 3, which is a whole number. But the square root of 2 does not work out to be a whole number. It's going to have some sort of decimal value, and it is an irrational number because the only way to get the value is by estimating. For example, the square root of 2 is between root 1 and root 4. Respectively, this is equal to 1 and 2. Since root 2 is between these two values, it must mean it is something around 1.3, 1.4 perhaps? Whatever it is, we have to estimate to get there. And I wanted this video to be more about visualizing rather than teaching, so I wrote a computer program using JavaScript that can help illustrate what the calculator might be doing when it's trying to estimate this value for you. If you punch root 2 into a calculator, you should get something along the lines of 1.414 something something something. And there are many ways to go about estimating these values. The approach I took was to use the bisection method. The value of root 2 is somewhere between 1 and 2. So imagine a number line where 1 and 2 are on both ends, and the bisection method uses the midpoint of the two best guesses you have. So in this case, my first best guess between 1 and 2 would be 1.5. But 1.5 is the same as saying square root 2.25, which exceeds the value of what we're trying to find here, which means it has to be somewhere between 1 and 1.5. And so I would take the midpoint of those two values, 1.25. This is the same as saying the square root of 1.5625, which is slightly lower than root 2, which means our value must be somewhere in this region over here. And so the bisection method just repeats itself over and over again until we find something that is closely accurate with very little changes over time. So coming back to the code, if I were to run this for the root of 2, I would get my answer down here as 1.414213562. And you guys can verify that in your own CAS or calculator to see that it'll be accurate to the eighth decimal at least. And it took 51 cycles of that bisection method to get there. But I've always wondered what it looks like for a calculator to do these calculations and figure out its accuracy. So I have a little bit of code down here where if I just uncomment this rectangle line, It'll begin to show rectangles on the right side here, and each rectangle will represent how accurate it is until it hits the white color. So if you watch what happens when I play it... Okay, that was a little bit fast, but it basically calculated the accuracy of each decimal as it went on. And so each rectangle here represents a decimal place. In other words, this first rectangle represents the first decimal place of the answer which is the 4. I'll just slow this down a little bit by changing this value over here so you guys can see how it does it in slow motion. So you can see it slowly figuring out the accuracy of each band as it goes to the next. And the accuracy sometimes goes up and down just depending on where it's bisecting through. But this is essentially an answer that is accurate to the 15th decimal place. I can change that for it to just be accurate to the 5th decimal place, which means I'll probably have an answer like 1.41421 and then the rest of the digits will be wrong. Yeah, so as you can see down here, 1.41421 and the rest of them are not right. So if you guys want to play around with this, all you need to do is change the decimal value up here for n and then change the speed down here if you want to make it go faster. I usually like to keep it at 5 and keep the decimal value at 9. And you can even change the color setting down here. So for example, if you wanted white bands, then you would keep that open. And when you run it, you'll just have white rectangular bands showing the accuracy. If you wanted it to be colorful instead, then you can comment this line out and uncomment these lines down here to show three different bands for a bunch of different rectangles. And it's all about just having a bit of fun. But I think it's really cool how maths can combine with programming this way to visually show what the calculator is thinking in the background when it's trying to estimate things like the square root of 2. And the beauty of this is 
you can use it for all sorts of values. It doesn't have to be two, it could be for nine. And so the root of nine is expected to be three. And that is exactly what it finds down here. I could even do it for larger numbers such as 3136. So the root of that would be 56. And what's interesting about this is that because it's an estimating method, it doesn't always get it right. It'll get it close to the answer, but it's uh, still a couple of decimals off there. And I can increase that accuracy by just changing n to 15, for example. And due to some limitations in the coding, I actually can't go past 15, which is a bit unfortunate. But let's just see what value this gives us. Fifty-six, And it was a nice beautiful display of colors as well as it was trying to get up to what it believes is accurate. So yeah, there you go guys. If you want to have a play with this, feel free to. The link to this program is in the description down below. And you can have a copy of this program by simply making a free account on P5. And then you can do your own coding with it, changing it to whatever colors you like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you would like to see me do more videos about maths and coding, please let me know down in the comments below. You can join MathBase by clicking the subscribe button down below and ring the bell so that when the next video comes out, you'll get notified about it. Thanks so much for watching guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.